Oh, well, welcome back. Uh, it's so good to have you with us as we continue to dig around in the book of Revelation in the Bible. Uh, we're in chapter 18 and today we're looking at verses 4 to 8 and this is what they say. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. For her sins are piled up to heaven and God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given. Pay back her double for what she has done. Pour her a double portion from her own cup. Give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave to herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit enthroned as queen. I am not a widow. I will not mourn. Therefore in one day her plagues will overtake her. Death, mourning and famine. She will be consumed by fire. For mighty is the Lord God who judges her. At the point of judgment, at the point of uh, judgment of the Babylon the Great, which we um, thought about in the last week's video, um, it, Babylon is a type of city or a kingdom or a government whose, cu whose, whose culture is that of one against God, worships the beast, Satan, not the lamb, Jesus Christ. Well, at the point of judgment of this city, there comes this call to God's people who worship and trust in Jesus Christ, the lamb who was slain but is now alive. Come out of her, my people, come out of her. This is a call here in this passage for distinctiveness, to be set apart from the world and clearly seen as such. Uh, it's as those who are in Christ are to be set apart. It's a call that's been echoed throughout the whole book of Revelation. We've come back to again and again. Not so much as a physical distinction. This is not a call for Christians to abandon uh, the, the world we live in, to go and uh, to, to flee countries and cultures to f into the desert to live on their own. That's not what it's about at all. It's a question of worship. Don't be drawn into the same way of life as those who've drunk down deeply with, of the wine of Babylon the Great, who shared in her riches and wealth and status only to have that turned back on them now in judgment. For through getting rich, they've caused untold suffering. This is a call, of course, to John's original readers of Revelation, but it's a call to the church through the ages, and it's a call to the church in the West today, particularly as pressure increases, increases in the West for churches and Christians to compromise on biblical orthodox belief in Christ Jesus as the way of life and the way to live life, morality and ethics, uh, goes along with it. It's the call, the call is not to collaborate with the culture, not to flee, but to be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves and live to worship Jesus Christ alone. The judgment that is coming is described as, as God remembering the crimes of this Babylon the Great. Her sins are piled high, she will receive as she is given grief and torment and death. She got rich on the back of the suffering of others and it will be repaid to her justly and rightly. How many empires across the world does this resemble? Well, all of them. The British Empire included, the Empire of the USA included now, the growing Chinese Empire that we see emerging. They might not be empire as we traditionally think, but they share the same characteristics. They got rich on the back of the torment and suffering of others. And see how triumphant this evil and sinful empire is, boasting that she is enthroned, that she is the queen, that she will never mourn, that she'll go on forever, that she'll never be a widow. And again, how much does this resemble our own culture that is against God and his Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Where we live as if we, we, we never die, where we live as if death is just a dream in our culture and we can postpone it forever, where our culture lives without regard to the eternal and presumes to think that wealth can continue to gather up and we can store it in storehouses and it'll stay there forever. Well, there will come a judgment. And it might be built into the world now as, as God has built judgment into this world, or it might come when Jesus Christ returns. But the sure thing is, is that judgment is coming. and We cannot shy away from it even as much as our culture might want to. Think about the last couple of years we've lived through. COVID-19 has showed us just how quickly life can change and how little control we have over our lives. Let's not waste this lesson and make sure that we are numbering our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom as the people of God. So says Psalm uh, 90 verse 2 the prayer of Moses the psalm of Moses one day the west will have to will have its sins judged 
One day the culture that worships so-called gods of wealth and status and power, which are really manifestations of the beast, of Satan, uh, well, they'll be held to account and will be consumed by the last judgment of God. It might feel now that our way of life will last forever, but it will come to an end. And so the call to you, if you know and worship Jesus Christ, is to make sure you don't get caught up in the pursuit of riches and power on the back of untold suffering of others, that you come out of that kind of culture that is against God. And for you, if you don't know Jesus, then know this, there is still time to turn to him, to repent, to turn away from searching for your own way and your own putting yourself as God. Call out to Jesus, search for him. He wants to be found. He is waiting to embrace you with open arms. He invites you to come to him and find your true rest, rest for your restless hearts in him. There is still time. Jesus Christ is calling you now. Repent and believe.